Hey there. If you're new to our channel, I'm Dr. Sabrina Solt. This is my husband, Zach. How's it going? And today, bear with us if this ends up being a long video because we have a ton of information that we want to share with you guys today. Uh, all about iron and ferritin storage, specifically as it relates to people who are on a carnivore diet, a ketovore diet, animal-based diet. Uh, but also, this is applicable to everyone else too. Mm -hmm. And that's because, and we'll get into this, most of the grains, actually pretty much all the grains in the United States are fortified with inorganic iron. Yeah, a terrible type of irons, iron ferrous too. And there's, so according to the, the RDA, there's, there's like a month's worth of iron in one box of Frosted Flakes, which is ridiculous, right? Yes. So, we'll so. get into like how iron is actually harmful to the body and how like too much of it is actually caused, might actually be the cause of heart disease. Yeah, so if you see looking down at my phone, it's because I have notes in here. Uh, at the time of recording this, I'm about 25 weeks pregnant. So my brain needs notes to make sure that I tell you guys everything. That so I, I want to, I think, I think we should start with some of the symptoms because yes. I, I see a lot in the carnivore space. And in the last, you know, almost two years that I've been in this space, uh, a lot of, a lot of the same complaints come up, especially initially for people. Um, so I wanted to go over some of the symptoms that I had and, and actually learned, you know, that th this was actually the cause of my problems. Yeah. And as soon as I saw This is yeah. how we got here. Yeah. Because I, uh, as a physician, we monitored his labs very closely initially. We monitored mine very closely initially because I was from the camp that like carnivore is going to kill you. And the crappy thing was his labs looked like that. <laughs> mine mm -hmm. actually looked really good. Yeah. Um, but initially he had some really, really severe worsening of a lot of labs and we could not figure it out for the longest time. Like we're talking months that we couldn't figure it out. So the symptoms that he's going to list right now are things that he actually experienced after about what, four to six months of being mm -hmm. carnivore. Yeah. This is annoying. Um, mm -hmm. After about four to six months of being carnivore. So go ahead. Uh, yeah. So the first, you know, the first symptom, and I see this a lot and, and especially in the groups, people say, Oh, you know, I did carnivore for two or three months and then around month two to month three, I started getting heart palpitations or they don't call them, they may not necessarily call them heart palpitations. They'll say, when I lay in bed at night, I can feel my heartbeat, which is, you know, it's basically the racing. same thing. Yeah. Racing heart or just, or just being able to feel the beats of your heart without touching your chest, right? If I put my hand on my chest, I can feel my heart beating, but I should not be able to feel my heart beating when my hand's not on my chest. And if you could feel that, or if you start to feel like, thumping in your ear or either either some sort of palpitation in any part of your body, that's considered a heart palpitation. Um, the second symptom that I started getting was muscle soreness, um, trouble sleeping. So muscle soreness means that like I, I wouldn't even work out and I would, I would feel like I did, right? And I would start to, like muscles would be sore for absolutely no reason. Um, trouble sleeping, big one. A lot of people that have uh, iron storage have a really hard time sleeping. Um, and that's due to the inflammation that's running through your body. Uh, let's start with this. Iron is the most oxidative element in, in your body. Okay. We'll dive into that. Yeah. Um, so it, it causes a lot of problems. Um, so yeah, headaches. Uh, the other thing is aversion to meat. So, and, and, th and this will be specifically meats that have higher iron content. If you get to a point where you're like, man, I cannot eat this steak. Your body's very intelligent. It knows what's going on. It's telling you not to eat it for a reason. Um, and then... Oh, this is a big one, frequent infections. I guess, so all bacteria in the body has to have iron to survive, to live. So in a higher iron environment, you, you're more likely to get infections, which happened to me twice. Before I started carnivore, I got two blood infections out of nowhere. Um, and we'll cover why most people that aren't carnivore also have these problems too, because it's like we said before, it's, it's in everything. Um, yeah, and then heart disease. A big one. Um, or even labs that look like heart mm -hmm. disease, but also like the labs can start to look like heart disease, even though you haven't quite developed it yet. Yeah. But you can absolutely develop heart disease as a result of this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really important distinction to make. Like, no, carnivore is not going to give you heart disease. Well, it's the same as, you know, it, it, there's a missing link. People say, oh, yeah. you know, cholesterol doesn't cause heart disease. Well, here's something that happens. When, when you have high iron, your cholesterol goes up because the oxidation in the blood is damaging your arterial walls. Your body makes cholesterol more than it needs. So your cholesterol was going to go up whether you were on carnivore or whether you were on a you know, standard, American, standard diet. American diet. So this might be the missing link for heart disease and why people on both sides of the spectrum get heart disease equally, right? Because vegans get heart disease and people that are carnivore get heart disease. So 
Exactly. And back to the heart palpitation thing. So this is where I see a lot of gas. We both see a lot mm -hmm. of kind of gaslighting in the carnivore space where especially in groups, people will post this comment all the time. See all the time. I have the heart palpitations or I, and everyone says, Oh, it's your electrolytes, your electrolytes. Oh are my on. God. So and they, they, people start hammering like electrolytes. Sorry if you hear our kids in the background. It's just, that's our life. Yep. Um, if they start hammering electrolytes with no improvement and in fact, certain things can get worse because if I've actually seen labs and this is the other thing, I have data on dozens of carnivores who have worked with me to look at their labs. That's that correlates all of the things that we're yeah. going to share with you today. So, and, and let's, let's get this straight too off the bat. So high iron doesn't mean that your iron serum is high. Iron storage looks like ferritin. Okay. Ferritin is, is an iron storage protein. So when, when iron gets too high in the body, your body will either store it in the organs like the heart, which is why you get the heart palpitations, right? So heart palpitations from iron is actually iron storage in the heart. Your iron, your heart is literally oxidizing. Um, but iron ferritin is the number we want to look at. Let's talk a quick second about what oxidation actually is. The easiest way to describe oxidation is the concept of rusting. So if you have a, like a met, old metal truck or something sitting out in the backyard and it's exposed to oxygen and water yeah. over time, it starts to rust. Mm -hmm. That process is oxidation. And basically that's what's happening to your insides when you exist in this state. Yep. So any sort of oxidative state is basically causing internal rusting. So no wonder your organs start to. Yeah, and that would look like, if, as far as blood work goes, that would look like mild peroxidase. Elevated, elevated mild elevated, peroxidase, mild peroxidase, HSCRP, possibly elevation in liver enzymes, mm -hmm. um, possibly decreased kidney function, possible increase in uric acid. Uh, I can go on. Yeah, and I, I want to say this because I, I know that she's a you know, doctor in the carnivore space, and there's a lot of doctors in the carnivore space like that don't practice medicine with it, right? None of them really do. I mean, maybe Dr. Barry probably does. I imagine he's got patients that are carnivore, but uh, our we, we actually have blood work from her clinic we're carnivore patients. We're watching this happen. Okay. And I've developed pa panels specifically for carnivores to look at these problems that I know are present in the community. Mm -hmm. And I even have a panel that's like my iron investigator panel. We can link that yes. down below um, if you guys are interested in that. But again, it's to have the data to back this up, I think is really meaningful because it means that we can be way more specific with people as far as getting them the results, because ultimately carnivore is still a really great and healthy way of well, eating for people. So I want to, I want to say something because yes. <laughs> we, we, you're, everybody says, Oh, then why do you still stay carnivore? And here, so here's the thing. It's, it's the iron is not the problem, right? The body, the body can take in excess iron and it can eliminate it properly. The main cause of iron is not from the iron, too much iron in your diet. I mean, it's partially that you could eliminate the problem by not getting too much iron in your diet or eliminating meat. The problem is lack of copper and other nutrients. Okay. So copper is a, is a control molecule for iron in the body, which means that one copper molecule controls about 4,500 molecules of iron. Okay. So if you're eating a diet, like, so the animals that we eat, they're copper deficient, right? They're not eating enough copper in their diet. So you're getting a zinc dominant animal, right? So when you eat a steak, even if it's grass fed and that animal has not had access to a copper rich diet, they used to spray copper sulfate on plants. They don't do that anymore. Um, so all the corn that the animals are getting is copper deficient. There's other minerals that need to go along with it too. Your zinc to copper ratio, if that is off, which means if you get too much copper, too much. I'm sorry, too much zinc and not enough copper, then your body holds on to iron. It cannot eliminate it. So is it the meat's fault? Absolutely not. Right. So I, you know, copper supplementation, I started taking copper bisinglycinate, which, you know, which helps. Um, but you know, so it's, it's not, it's not, it was like, Oh, it must be the meat, you know, ca you know, carnivore doesn't work. Well, it's, the problem is that our animals are not treated the way yeah. that they're supposed to be. And they're not eating foods that's appropriate for them, which causes problems in us, right? It goes downstream. So, and that leads into another point is that, there are multiple reasons why your body will sequester and store ferritin in high amounts. The zinc copper balance ratio being off is one of them. Simply just like overeating a ton of it, especially in the standard American diet, when you're eating the inorganic forms that your body actually has no use for. So it says, Oh, what do we do with this? We'll just store it. Uh, that's another reason. 
And then one of the other oh, reasons- Oh, and the recommended daily intake of iron is completely wrong. You don't need that much iron. Whatever it was, the number is like super high. You don't need that much iron. Yep. And then one of the other reasons is a genetic disorder called hemochromatosis, mm -hmm. where people actually just have a predisposition to storing iron. Now, that being said, hemochromatosis isn't the only genetic issue that can cause iron storage. There are other iron storage genes. And what I found, again, this is based on labs that I've seen both his and other carnivores in the space, is that there is also a possible correlation between your propensities to store iron as ferritin in your system and the MTHFR defect. Mm -hmm. As so, well as trauma. Yes. And yes, any sort of psychological, emotional, physical trauma that you might have had in your body can also ca cause you to store that excess iron, kind mm -hmm. of like you're put Iron Man, you're trying to protect yourself. Yes. Yeah, so your body tries to hold on to things because it thinks it's in a, in a stress state. So if you're in a constant, I always tell people this, uh, carnivore is not for people who are high stress. Who because it, yeah. that length, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it can be very, it can, it can be very difficult on the body because um, again, this could be a whole other topic, but carbohydrates are really great at blunting cortisol and you don't have carbohydrates on a carnivore diet necessarily, right. um, which means if you are in a high cortisol state all the time, you can actually make a lot of things worse. Mm -hmm. So, But the, the, the lack, and so in a lot of people that do carnivore, they, they, one thing that really, really helps is oysters because oysters have selenium, they have iodine, they have copper, they have zinc, and they have a little bit of iron. Um, in which we actually have an oyster boom supplement that has all the we'll nutrients. Link that yeah, below we'll link too. it. We'll link it. Uh, but also, uh, beef liver mm -hmm. is a good source of of copper as well as folate. Which, if you are if you are a person who has the MTHFR defect, both of those are going to be really key for you. Um, what's another copper source? A lot of seafood is going to have salmon. Salmon is wild a, caught salmon. Yes, wild caught salmon's higher in copper. Yes. So um, six weeks ago, this is like sometime like beginning of April, I made a post on Instagram all about this iron stuff. And there's a couple of points in there that I want to like re bring into this video. First one being is that iron is still essential. Like we still can't live without it because it's right. what carries oxygen throughout our blood. So you absolutely need it. And normally your doctor's not going to care about your iron levels unless you're a female who is very starkly anemic. Um, or you are a man or a woman who has like the extreme high levels of hemochromatosis they're not looking at the optimal ranges. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the difference between someone like me who practices more functional medicine and, and looks at things from, again, the functional perspective um, versus the stark disease or no disease process. So you still need it, but it's very much a Goldilocks mineral, like mm -hmm. not too much, not too little, just enough to make sure you're still breathing properly. Yeah. Um, and again, the reference ranges for ferritin are super wide. But the optimal ranges for women are roughly 20 to 40 and for men about 50 to 70. I think it's lower. Dr. McCullough also thinks it's 20. But yeah. So and the problem is, is you can't really prove one way or another, but excess, you know, ferritin is a storage. It's, it's not a useful, your, your body is not using ferritin for anything except to store excess iron. So it is a, it is a, Hey, I have too much iron. I'm going to, I'm going to put it in this, in this protein to help keep it safe. So it doesn't oxidize. However, it still does. Here's another point that's interesting. So in medical school, we were all taught that ferritin is also what they call an acute phase reactant. So meaning it can increase in certain phases um, in response to things like very intense inflammation or some sort of disease process happening in the body. Where that doesn't make sense to me is where did all that ferritin come from? Like in order, because how many molecules of iron are in a ferritin molecule? 4,500, or no, it's- It's it's really high. It's, high. it's a lot of iron molecules to one ferritin molecule. Yeah. And you just don't have that much circulating iron to cause that increase in ferritin. Mm -hmm. So, and again, I don't know because I wasn't taught any differently, nor have I dove into this in any degree to find out what that answer is. But I, to me, that no longer makes sense. And you wonder if like, okay, was the ferritin just high all along because, and that's what caused the disease process that you're now mm -hmm. looking at because high levels of ferritin are seen in heart disease, diabetes, insulin resistance, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancer, MS, gout, COPD, liver disease, sarcopenia, osteoporosis, macular degeneration, and more. And this, this list, this sourcing comes from a book called Dumping Iron by P.D. Magnin. Um, that's a great book. You guys have to watch read it. If you're in, I mean, if you have any interest in your health, Reading that book just puts a lot of things. And, you, and I always like, I don't believe hundred percent in anything that everyone, like if somebody says something, I think that 60% of what they says is prop they said is probably accurate, right? Because every, everybody doesn't know everything, but if 60% of what he said is accurate, that's well, scary. Iron is a, iron is a, a huge problem. The thing about his book is that it's heavily referenced. Mm -hmm. 
heavily referenced. So yeah. should you want to dive into the source literature, it is there. Now, an interesting other correlation that I wanted to make uh, has to do with my personal situation is that I'm pregnant and I have had really severe meat aversion. And I basically went into this pregnancy eating a ribeye for lunch every single day, mm -hmm. like a rare ribeye for lunch every single day. But there is uh, research that says that iron can be toxic to developing fetuses. And this could be why so many women develop such strong meat aversion, especially first trimester and sometimes even later into mm -hmm. pregnancy. Because uh, currently, I can't do steak. I just yeah. can't. I can do ground beef. I can do brisket. Um, but cooked, cooked meats. Yeah. Very well cooked meats. I can totally do, but I cannot do anything with any semblance of rareness or like that active heme iron, yeah. really. So, so, and then the other thing is what I think happens a lot is these doctors, you know, they mean well, but they say, oh, your, your ferritin could be as high as 100, 150, whatever, and that's not a problem. Well, they're not also checking mild peroxidase when yeah. they check with, when they do these labs. So this is a silent killer, right? Heart disease does not, ha it's not like you run around like, oh, my heart disease is acting up today, right? Usually you find out when you're on the floor dead from a heart attack. Yeah. Okay. So you, you, people say, oh, this carnivore diet, I feel great. Yeah, you do. But is your body, is your body being oxidized from the inside out? Are you damaging your arterial walls and you have zero symptoms from it because it's a lifelong process. Most people they have heart disease, they die in their 50s and 60s, right? It, and this is this has probably been happening since they were kids, right? Yep. Look at Pop-Tarts. Uh, all Cereal. cereals are super high in iron. Like we're talking like enough, a month's worth of supply in iron of one box of cereal. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, I used to eat an entire box of cereal. Like that's easy, right? Yeah. Like the servings on, on box of cereal is completely BS because we all know that we can tear up a box of Cinnamon Toast Crunch pretty easily, right? Yeah. So... And it's like pastas too, like every oh, yeah. every grain, every it's all for they add, rice. They add iron to rice. They add iron to if you eat bread in America, it's got iron. Go look at the the labels. There's always at least one to two percent iron in bread, and that's not natural, right? Because they're they're yeah, adding it's the inorganic yeah, iron that your body can't even ferrous. utilize. And this goes along with the other part of the post that I had is that this is the most disturbing thing to me. Like based on that list of diseases that I gave you guys just a few moments ago, here's the thing. It's not actually the ferritin or the iron that's making you sick. It is that process of oxidation that's happening yes. in your body over time. So you and your doctor could spend literally years chasing the symptoms of those diseases that I mentioned previously and never looking at ferritin, thereby always getting worse. Mm -hmm. So again, somebody comes into cardiovascular disease and they're only treating it as a heart issue and never looking at the stored ferritin, but yet the ferritin keeps storing over time and the person never gets better to spend, despite the best efforts. Yep. This is why. And then, uh, so his book, that D Dumping Iron, he, he references, so women, they bleed once a month, most of their life, they bleed once a month, right? So they're losing iron. Blood, blood loss is the only way to dump iron, to, to get rid of it fast. Fast. Yes. Women live longer than men, right? It all makes sense. So women are less likely to get all these different diseases. They're less likely to get heart disease. But women don't develop heart disease until, until after, menopause. after menopause, right? So there's all these correlations and things, you know, and right, correlation is not causation, but we also, we also don't understand how one second. All right, we're back. Sorry, kid. Kid, <laughs> kid interrupted. Anyway, so what, what was I saying? Oh, but, but like, so women, they, they develop these diseases more later on than men. And it's so, it's like the correlation is there. And I was saying correlation is not causation, but people on both sides are getting heart disease, right? We, we, we say, oh, well, you know, cholesterol is not the cause of heart disease. So eating more meat is not the cause. Well, your body, you, you, just because you eat cholesterol doesn't mean your body is just dumping it into the blood. So people that have higher cholesterol are having higher cholesterol because of some so sort of a reason. There's always Your a reason. Your body is always intelligently responding to something. Mm -hmm. So if it is that you are eating meat, but it's not necessarily the meat that's damaging your arteries or clogging your arteries, it could be that the meat is causing your body to store iron because you are copper deficient mm -hmm. or have an MTHFR defect yes. or have a iron storage disorder or and or and. Yeah, whatever and going. then also if you're coming from a standard American diet, you're not. You're, you're already. Not, you're already iron overloaded. You're because already you're, iron overloaded, yeah. severely copper deficient, and all you're doing the only mineral you're correcting from the standard American diet going into carnivore zinc. is zinc. Yeah. And so people will feel better initially because they're mm -hmm. like, yeah, my zinc's my zinc's coming in, so their testosterone will go up. They'll start feeling better. Maybe their skin's looking better. They're, oh, what's the other? Oh, so the sex binding globulin. Sex hormone, hormone binding globulin. Oh, this is another lab marker that we look at. If you constantly have adequate testosterone levels, but low free testosterone and high uh, sex, sex hormone binding glob globulin, almost always an iron storage issue. Happened to me. 
That's yeah. what, mine was always that way my whole life. And I, I, you know, when I, so I watched my iron, my ferritin go from, I think when we first started carnivore, it was like 130, which is high, yeah. right? It shouldn't be that high. It should be 30. And then I watched it climb up and climb up and climb up and then double month after month after month. It was pretty stark when we started yeah. paying attention to that. And again, I wasn't trained to look at it this way. I've mm -hmm. had to retrain a lot of my medical knowledge and approach just from being in this, in this kind of community. Um, which is great because I feel like I'm a much more effective doctor now. Um, but again, we have the data to back all this stuff up. So this is interesting because people ask like, okay, is this going to happen to everybody? And it's really hard to say, but I've actually never done labs on anybody and hundreds of hundreds of patients um, where they have had safe, we'll call them safe ferritin levels as they've aged. And they've all got something going on. It's iron cumulative and they all have disease. Yeah. Oh, and let's, 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 let's talk about this real quick, real quick. Just, uh, so Paul Saladino, right? We all know that Paul Saladino stopped carnivore because of heart palpitations, right? And what did he say? He goes, no amount of electrolytes fix my problem, right? He would say, no amount of electrolytes is going to fix your problem. You can eat it all day long. He was taking like ungodly amounts of potassium that was dangerous and all this different stuff. And his problem never went away. Dude. It's, it's ferritin. He was high. He had high iron storage as well, right? I mean, it's, it's so obvious. He came from a vegan diet, right? He came from all these different things. It's the same. So if you're eating grains, you already have iron storage. So he quit carnivore and started eating fruit because he had iron storage and he just yeah. didn't know it. And, and this, I think, is a great segue into, well, what the hell do you do about it? Right. Like, what do you, so say you have high iron, say you've done the test, say you've got all these symptoms. And you're like, shit, well, what now? I'm not going to stop eating the most nutritious food right. on the planet necessarily. So what do I do? Well, there's the whole, you know, for women, we'll just talk about women real first. If you are a woman who is still menstruating, you're likely losing enough blood every month that it's going to make a measurable difference for you. And you're probably going to be fine. But postmenopausal is, might, is the, when you might want to consider other methods. Now, as a young man, he's almost close, close to 40-ish. Um, we do therapeutic phlebotomy, where we basically remove about 500 milliliters of blood every couple months at this point. Yeah, we did a, we did a couple months every, every month. Yeah, we around. initially were to get things down. Um, and that's been significant for him because he actually went through a meat aversion phase where he was just eating like Could a, not eat a lot of salmon and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he couldn't eat, he just couldn't. And so he was, again, eating other stuff. But so now he's like back to enjoying a ribeye every uh, single day. So, it, and it, so there's a couple things you can do too, but phlebotomy works well. That's the only way to really, so if you're fair, every, every 500 milliliters of blood is 30 to 50 points of ferritin that you'll lose. Right. And what happens is you're not actually using, losing the ferritin, you're losing red blood cells and the body uses stored ferrets, the stored ferritin to replace those blood cells. So you're pulling from your store. So you're not actually just losing ferritin by losing blood. That's not how it works. Yeah. But there's also, a couple of things that I do, um, there are foods, specifically plant foods. There's one, there's one um, animal-based food that actually slows the absorption of iron. So eggs is one of them, and you have to eat the, the egg whites and the yolks together. I do not eat ribeye or steak or anything without eggs with it because it does slow the absorption of iron. Um, things that I don't do that also slow the absorption of iron, but you, you know, if you want to, you can do it. Um, tea. Um, I actually can't have even a drop of tea or my whole body starts tingling from the oxalates. It's terrible. Um, red wine will block iron absorption. Um, coffee. Uh, what's that? Yeah, fast. Yeah, oh, ahead. yeah. So Okay, so just two things on that because you had mentioned – actually, tell them about how fast just regular steak absorbs because you knew that stuff. Oh, yeah. So uh, but the thing that I was doing, I was just eating ri a ribeye by itself every day at like noon for the first meal. And I think that I was also doing – grain fed animals, which is a little bit, has a little bit worse copper to zinc ratio than a grass fed animal because a grass fed animal is still going to have more exposure to copper in the soil. Um, grain fed animals, absolutely not. But I was eating a grain fed Costco steak every day um, for lunch, right? And I just watched my health just start deteriorating. And so a steak by itself with nothing else in your stomach, you're absorbing almost like 90, like the absorption rate of steak by itself in an empty stomach is absolutely crazy, right? Yeah. So eating eggs with, with it or, or just eating something, even if it's just like, you know, mixing two different things together, it slows that absorption rate down. So you can, you can, 
you know, enjoy different things and then not have to worry about like eating a steak by itself is not going to help this scenario. Is what I'm say. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to do some, some food pairings, which, you know, is really interesting because a lot of like ethnical foods societies, like they've, they have these pairings already, but anyway, it's a whole other topic, but I just yeah. wanted to make a comment about, uh, cause he's posted stuff before about his therapeutic phlebotomy and this giving of blood. You don't have to go to a donation center. You can literally find places that will do what's called therapeutic phlebotomy where they will just yeah. will remove about half 500 Should milliliters of blood, packs. um, 500 milliliters of blood and get rid of it. And like, don't be we, like, we do it here at the house, but these 16 gauge needles, I don't recommend. Yeah, these are, these are 16 tough. 16 gauge. It's, it just Oof. is meant to lead you pretty fast. It does pretty fast. Though. Um, but again, you don't have to go to a specific donation center and like, uh, people i've seen comments of people be like well, what are they going to do with my blood like um, literally there is not enough like money to hire somebody to fuck around with your blood to make it make a difference like they're just yeah. going to dispose of it nobody cares i don't I mind into the you. lemon tree outside <laughs> i promise you like nothing weird like it's yeah. just it's just not happening well i mean it could be a scam but who cares but like it's your health just get the blood out of you that's that's the whole point and then you know, the other thing is just preventing this from happening. And every time I post something on this, people are like, oh, well, it's not happening to me. And I'm like, oh, really? What's your ferritin levels? Uh, I don't know. Right. Well, you want to know that it's happening to you. You may feel great and you still may be developing heart disease. Like, I'm sorry to tell you, but saying I feel great is not it's not the answer to this. Yes. This is not a whole other conversation, yeah. but I think it's important to mention a lot of people don't live in their bodies. Like so many people that I meet patients otherwise are so disconnected from the sensations that happen within themselves that to say I feel fine means fuck all. Like it really doesn't. Like how are you sleeping? How are you pooping? How does your skin look? How are you recovering after workouts? Like all of those things can make a really big difference. And unless they're perfect, or like, or even if you all have excess fat on your body, like again, there's mm -hmm. always reasons why. Like if you are anyway, whole other topic. Yeah. But that's the reason. So okay, we talked about getting rid of iron via yeah, phlebotomy. phlebotomy, and then also <laughs> slowing the absorption down. If you're staying on carnivore, don't eat steaks by themselves. And here's another thing too: I, I didn't bring this up, and I get yelled at about people they don't like this, but you don't. You, people on carnivore eat too often. Okay, if you're eating a, a steak three, four times a day, if you're eating two or three pounds of red meat, you really don't need that much meat, right? If you're a hundred and you know, if you're a three hundred pound man, maybe you need three pounds of meat. I'll caveat that slightly with if you're in the initial stages and you're having to do serious repletion from being a, on a very that, deficient that too, diet, yeah. that can be useful for you. But once you've reached like a maintenance area, you don't need to eat steak three times a day. You don't need three meals a day. I eat once. A, I eat once in the morning. I'll eat a, you know a, a, a ribeye and some eggs, and I'm satiated till about three or four o'clock. I might eat something small. Or something you know like a piece of salmon or like something little but i think eating too often and if you're eating a giant iron source meal three times a day we're not we don't come from an environment you know historically where we had food and steak every every meal three four times a day yeah. right so i was doing that before too which i think kind of led to some of it is just eating a giant piece of red meat three, four times a day when you don't need it can cause iron storage because you're yeah. eating a ton of iron. And if you see carnivore influencers doing stuff like that, yeah. like just take it with a grain of salt. Like I stop actually, eating what influencers eat. Like as a blanket statement, yeah. like I rarely ever post what I eat because I eat for me and my results and my body and my metabolism and my preferences. But I don't want anyone necessarily copying it because if they do so thinking they're going to get my results, they're not. Yeah, but I mean, what what is their ferritin level right, right. and people because the, the people i post this me losing blood and they and they they ask questions they're like oh you know is this just you is this just you a genetic thing I'm like i don't know i haven't run your blood your blood work right you want me to give you an answer that makes you feel good about it but i'm sorry cupcake you're not going to know until you get these checked right yeah. and when you get your ferritin checked and it's 300 and your mpo is you know 2000 you got heart disease <sighs> right? It's happening. And you're just not checking. You just don't know. Like I could go to the gym and work out for two and a half hours, right? I had heart disease. Like I I'm recovering from that right now. Right. Yeah. So, and I look better than most people. So you can't just be like, Oh, I feel great. I feel fine. I feel this way all the time. Right. No, you gotta, you gotta check these numbers to, to know. And again, we'll link the panels below. So if you do want this looked at, mm -hmm. they're highly detailed panels, just so you guys are aware. The price is probably going to be like sticker shocky. We'll have a discount code down there for you too. Um, but look at all the things that have come with it. It's the most comprehensive panel. And again, the, your results will be delivered by one, if not both of us. So you can have like 
our eyes are on it. So mm -hmm. you will get that. I can look at your blood and tell you what's going on. I mean, like, he's, you know, I'm not he's even had enough training. I've well, had he... enough training from her that I can look at somebody's <laughs> blood panel. And I have lots of, of clients that I've coached from, you know, Rivero and such that they explain all these different problems they're having. And then I have them, I say, listen, before we go, like, I need you to go get your ferritin checked. I need you to go get this, this looked at. And all of them have ferritin in 300s. I have yet to have a client that went and got blood work that didn't have this high, this problem. And again, it's not caused by carnivore. It's carnivore is still a species appropriate diet, but we have to understand that the way that our animals are raised and our environment that we're in now is hypertoxic. There's it's deficient in minerals. Um, these are problems, right? We can't just switch to animal meat and expect it has everything that we need based on what we've been doing, you know, the way that we bring our food to, to market. So, you know, copper supplements, uh, you know, there's a couple. Oh, yeah. So copper is great for balancing your copper to zinc ratio. And but you have to watch it and know what they are. Yeah, you still have to monitor this, right? Like I wouldn't dose copper for more than about two or three months without retesting to see where your levels have gotten to because things can shift fairly rapidly. And we want to make sure that we're also not putting you into a copper excess state either because that's going to come with its own whole yeah. host of issues as well. These things need to all be balanced so again copper zinc is going to help remove some of that sequestered ferritin it doesn't do so rapidly so we may need to bring other things on board one of the other things that i like to bring on board is something called lactoferrin so lactoferrin is actually a um it's an i guess what we call it, a protein structure that is usually found in dairy and well it's, a, it's found in mother's milk too yes and baby in human baby milk and i think that it's there to protect yeah. Both the, the baby from iron, right? The body, oh, your body. Oh, that's a whole yeah. other conversation yeah. about like iron in mothers and infants. So mom's milk makes lactoferrin that goes into the baby, which helps bind excess iron and gets rid of it. Now, well, why it? would the body do that? Because babies don't need to breathe in utero. So why are they necessarily having to carry iron? Like right. it's so, it's like it's these silly logical things that make sense when you say them out loud, but nobody really sits there and thinks about like, my baby doesn't really necessarily need to be carrying iron through the system right now because it could be causing more oxidative stress. So it's not useful. Well, not, not excess ferritin. Well, it, it does need iron for yeah. blood. But, but yeah. right, not really right now because it's not carrying yeah. the oxygen, right? So, okay. So lactoferrin can be really, really useful because this is one and thing. And it is available in a supplement. It is available in a supplement and it will actually chelate, mean bind to ferritin to remove from the tissues. It is one of the only things out there that works in that manner. A lot of the other things that are out there, like IP6, what are some other Inositol. things? Inositol, that's plant-based though. Yeah. One second. Okay, lactoferrin, IP6, inositol, those are plant-based, not necessarily ideal. Sorry for that hiccup. Thing. Well, IP6 inositol, I think, is better at blocking iron yes, than it is block from, absorption from binding. Versus chelate it out. So lactoferrin is really great for chelating it out. Um, again, it comes in a supplement. I can link my full script down below too. If you register for full script, you can buy lactoferrin on there. Um, and generally speaking, I usually like to dose men higher, sometimes about 300 milligrams once to twice a day. Women, some usually less hundred milligrams once to twice a day, all depends on your symptoms, what your levels are at and what else your diet looks like. So I, again, I don't just suggest taking this stuff willy nilly, like work with somebody who gets it because you can cause other stuff like your body does not work in isolation in any way, shape or form. So you have to understand like there is an interplay between all these other nutrients mm -hmm. that again, DIY if you really want to, but if what yeah, you but, I mean, realistically though, like I said, you're giving blood and giving 500 milliliters of blood is, th is 30 to 50 points of ferritin. That's over like a two month period. So if you give blood, it takes, it takes a while for your body to pull from those stores. Or, you know, if your ferritin's 100, then that means you probably want to give blood a couple times a year. Yeah, but monitor, monitor like it. keep checking these things because again, even once you get to a good level, that doesn't mean you're no longer ever going to store it. Like you have to keep Yeah, checking. most likely you're going to continue to store because what- So labs once a couple copper, times a year, at least every quarter, if you could afford it. And there's it. tons of studies that show that people that give blood live longer, right? Yes. It's there's the data's there and it's like right in our faces. Yeah. And the, the United States government is forcing 
iron into it's in, literally into, law into yeah it's a law it's a you law can't they sell. have to put this iron into those which is highly products. oxidative and iron ferrous is more oxidative because it's like immediately like turned into ox you know it oxidizes so they're basically killing people because they think anemia is a thing anemia is not it's very 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 rare to have real anemia it's usually caused by one of these other minerals that's missing it's crazy yes that's a whole other topic and it, again it's just a whole other topic. Yeah. So what haven't we covered yet? Um, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Oh, there's a, there's docs that'll talk about this online too. There's uh, Morley, Dr. Morley Robbins. Oh yeah, we'll link the Morley and Mercola article or video down yeah. below. That's a so really they have good multiple interview. videos on this. Like there's these yeah. do there's doctors have been talking about iron storage problems for 40 years and nobody nobody listens to them. And we have all these diseases that we that doesn't matter what diet you're on, right? You have the same you have the same level of of heart disease and this and that and all these other diseases. Um, that book that we talked about links all different types of cancer to iron, like explains it like, oh, yeah. wow, this makes total sense. It's like, an easy is, read too. Like yes. if you're not of the technical mindset or not of the scientific word mindset, like it's totally fine. It's, easy. it's written for the layperson. And it's $14 on Amazon. Like if you can't spend $14 on Amazon for your health, like there's no help <laughs> in it anyway. So like I got it used on Amazon for $7. It was a used copy. I got lucky, but still, it's not that much money. You should buy that book. And you know, if, if you don't agree with everything in the book, just like I said before, there's a, a portion of what he said has got to be true because it makes a ton of sense. So and here's the thing too: take it with a grain of salt. All the people that we have worked with in this framework of reducing ferritin and the iron and balancing minerals, they get better. Mm -hmm. Like I got better. You know, and so I haven't had heart palpitations. I, I had heart palpitations straight for almost days, a year daily. Days. Like it was I didn't scary sleep. for both of us. Yeah, I didn't sleep. Like I was getting CAC scores done. My CAC was CAC oh. was climbing. Like heart, my coronary calcium score was climbing within months. It was doubling. Right. So like all of these things were happening. I'm like, what the hell? Like I feel great. Everything else looks fine. Um, my peroxidase was just like going through the roof. Right. So yeah. oxidation was happening. Well, what's the cause? I'm on this species appropriate it's diet. Perfect everything's diet. Supposed to, everything's everybody, supposed to be fine. yeah, everybody online talks about how but great it's it is. Because we are our animals are deficient. And he came like the diet that he was on before, like he would literally eat a grocery store pizza infused. They were with, organic. <laughs> organic <laughs> infused. Organic canola oil. But it's still like it's still a grain that had iron added to mm -hmm. it. And like he, again, copper deficient, like all of the MTHFR, like he yeah. had all these other things. That, that doesn't mean I'm a motherfucker. It means <laughs> it it's a, gen a, genetic it's a genetic snip, thing, whatever. But again, we look at both of our labs, compare and contrast. Mine significantly all except your ferritin was was doubling. My the ferritin last few did months. double. Yeah, I went from a ferritin naturally of about forty. Your ferritin was fifty about, almost her whole life, and yeah, when she started 40 carnivore, something. it went up to like one hundred and thirty or something. No, like it was. And it went to the eighties, um, which is one why. Of I don't think so. I think that was your lowest one. Oh, uh, maybe mine was 100. But and so I think that's why two things happened to me really interesting in the beginning of this pregnancy. One was my severe meat aversion. Two was how badly I reacted to having COVID the second time. Oh yeah. And this is because COVID is one of those microbes that actually utilizes iron to replicate. All my all microbes. I think and I I know, but COVID is definitely one of them. Yeah. And so, which is really interesting because you start to see people who develop hair loss after having COVID and that ends up being due to an iron deficiency issue. Oh yeah, and also uh, hair loss and hair discoloration, hair turning white is, a, not, is a copper, a copper iron, iron problem. Yeah. So all of these different things that, that are happening to people as they age, aging might actually be exacerbated by, the, by this copper thing because the body doesn't have a natural way to get rid of excess iron. So it holds on to it and it stores it. This might actually be a missing link. With is the, aging ferritin. Yeah. It could possibly just be because it causes the mitochondrial dysfunction. It'll cause that yes. telomere shortening. Like it causes the inflammation aging issue. Like all the actual well, reasons. Entropy why in general is oxidation. oxidation. So anyway, these are just some things to think about. Um, none of this is meant as medical advice or diagnosis or treatment. I have to have that little disclaimer in there for you guys. Um, again, we are going to link everything below that we talked about. Um, the Morley Robinson, Dr. McCole interview, our Oyster Boom product, the Dumping Iron book, uh, the various panels with some discount codes, um, and also links to full script and the lactoferrin stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, and the a whole, a whole I, I'm, I don't, I'm not a big fan of supplements anymore. 
And the reason yeah. we have, well, our supplement is not really a supplement. It's a whole food that's put into a it's supplement. Literal, it's literally just oysters. Yeah. So it's that's not it. a supplement because our bodies have a natural way of breaking down real food. And the ratios of minerals are proper. Because it's coming from a real thing. In a real food. So people are like, oh, I'm taking iodine, Lugols, and all this crap. And I'm like, man, you, that you're overdosing on one, which screws up another, right? So yep. this, this the whole thing is, is why we have iron. Let me finish. Yes. This whole thing is why we have iron problems in the first place is because we're, you know, our ratios are off because we're doing something improper to our animals. We're feeding them improperly, which is, which is, which is going to us. So our supplement, Oyster Boom, has all the minerals in you need that you need for also th thyroid problems, but in the correct ratios. We yep. forget about this. Everything has to be in correct ratios. Your body knows how to break these things down properly. So, yep. All right. I think that covers all of it. Yep. Um, if you have questions, find me on Instagram. It's uh, at carnivorous Z. And then he does offer coaching. We do offer those panels that come with the consultations. Um, if you don't have anything nice to say in the comments, don't say anything at all. Cause we no, really I'll, don't I'll care. correct you anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead and try that with me. So it'll work well. Um, yes. So besides that, I hope this is useful. I hope that if you were dealing with this, that this has kind of shed some light on stuff for you and that you can move forward a better direction and uh, that maybe you'll share this with somebody who might, need the help that comes with it. And again, this applies to whether you're on any sort of carnivore based diet, any sort of standard American diet. Um, it's an important subject mm -hmm. and it could save a life. So yeah. let us know right. if there was any questions. Um, again, find us on Instagram. I'm at Dr. Salt. He's at carnivorous Z. We'll drop our Instagram links below too. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Bye. See you guys next time.